What's going on, BFL fam? I'm Carlos. This is Steven. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Brooklyn Fragrance Lover. Today, four fragrances from Aaron Terrence Hughes. Keep it right there. Brooklyn Fragrance Lover. Thanks so much for tuning in today, as always. I really do appreciate it and hope you're all doing great. So, Aaron Terrence Hughes is a perfumer from England. He went to school for chemistry. Okay. But he also took a year of perfumery. Oh, great. He's pretty much self-taught. He gets inspired. Or how he works on a fragrance is by a piece of music. Then he creates the liquid by how he feels he would dance to that music or how artistic the music is. That's a pretty cool approach. I like yeah, that. I think that's a lot of fun. These were sent for review, but as always, all opinions are our own. So these are four that I chose from the many that he sent me. He sent me a bunch of these. His collection is pretty huge. Is it? Okay. There's got to be like 15 fragrances. And a lot of them are really good. Most of them are really good, but these four just stood out a little bit more for me personally. I need to try the rest. Okay, cool. So um, we're going to start off with the one closest to me, which is cedarwood and bergamot. Sounds good. Sounds refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> so this is definitely a citrus fragrance. It's bright. Not too overly bright, like a uh, soapy, but it's okay. definitely a citrus, happy fragrance. Fairly linear, fairly simple, but enjoyable. It's one of those that'll put you like in a good mood. Yeah, let me smell that again. So we sprayed these about a half hour ago. So now we're kind of like in the mid dry down. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Wow. That's very bright, fresh, citrusy, lemony. There's also kind of like a floral thing going on mm -hmm. in here. I don't know if it's orange blossom or jasmine. When you sprayed it before, I said orange blossom in the air. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it actually does remind me of some other orange blossoms that I've tried in the past. In terms of like the quality of the raw material, I don't think it smells like any other fragrance that I've smelled before, which is awesome. I really like this one and it yeah. smells very natural as opposed to like an artificial citrus. It's really good. So I find that I'm, wow. I am really drawn to uh, fragrances that are simple, sometimes, mm -hmm. that are simple but have a citrus juxtaposed against like a woody note, kind of like that premier note that we like, the Calabrian orange. Oh, I remember that one, yeah. And uh, there's one from the Armani Privé collection, but that this one reminds me of those type of fragrances where it's simple, has a little complexity, but it's just really nice and feels good to wear. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I really enjoy that one. Definitely one that I would reserve for the summertime. It's just yeah. very bright, very full of life. I like that one. So up next, we have Santal Extreme. This is one of my favorites. It's very warm wearing on skin. Mm -hmm. It's fuzzy. It's kind of like a like a scarf or a nice sweater. It's definitely woody. Perhaps a little um, oud, perhaps in there or something. Okay. Or at least on the paper sometimes. They, these smell different on skin than the paper. So. Th this is the one with Santal in it? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's nice. That's really nice, actually. Wow. Mmm. I see what you mean when you said warm. It's mm. kind of cozy, warm, resinous. So there's like an ambery thing going on in here. But I like that the ambery accord in the base doesn't have an emphasis on the vanilla because a lot of them do, and it kind of ventures in sweet territory. I think this is a little more sophisticated than that. Yeah, and there's a creaminess as well. Yeah, I like that one. That's definitely one of my personal favorites. Yeah, very warm. Maybe even like a little bit of rose in here. Definitely has an oriental thing going on. Mm -hmm. So I enjoy this one. Really nice. So I might as well do this one since it's on my side. So this one is called Onyx. And, uh, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. This one is really good. So far, my favorite. So full disclosure. Okay. So this kind of reminds me of like um, Chanel's Coromandel or like a Zerzhoff Richwood. Okay. Very opulent, luxurious. 
very rich, regal, you know, fit for a king kind of a scent, mm. you know? Definitely stands out. It's the standout fragrance in the collection for me right now. This definitely has a nice, juicy, jammy rose up in there, for sure. Oh, I was also going to say patchouli. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's. I didn't come to me right away, but I would definitely say there's a little bit of patchouli in there, I too. I could see where you find it kind of in the vein of... Um, Richwood? Carmandel. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think more Carmandel than Richwood. Yeah. Because I don't get much rose in um, Richwood, but I see what you're saying. Okay. I do like this one as well. This is also very nice. Okay, very cool. Yeah, that's my favorite so far. I love that one. These are all definitely unisex, we should add. Okay. I can definitely see how they are unisex. I think... Did I do good? No, I didn't. No, no, that's fine. <laughs> uh, I do think that they are unisex, mm -hmm. but I think they're all tailored for a different emotion, different occasion, perhaps even a different season. And so the one thing that I'm enjoying a lot so far is the variety among the collection. Mm -hmm. And the last one here, I remember, had chocolate in the name. Uh, chocolate, <laughs> rose, and oud. <laughs> so this is definitely the one that piqued my interest just based off the name alone because I am a gourmand lover. Okay. Mm. I thought it was going to smell more, I'm going to use your favorite word, lactonic. Because <laughs> when you think of chocolate, you think of like a milk chocolate, mm -hmm. like creamy, milky. And it's not. It's more of like a bitter chocolate. Bitter dark chocolate, yeah? Exactly, yeah. Which is not a bad thing by any means doesn't smell bitter or sour, but it's more of like the more dry variety of chocolate. And something about it is actually kind of reminding me of Black by Bulgari. Mm. I don't know. Let me see. I don't know if you get that. Kind of like a Van Cleef and Arpels, Midnight in Paris, Bulgari Damn Black. You. Damn you. I did not Do get you? that before, but yes, I got that. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> so I don't know if, if it's right in saying this, but it almost kind of smells a little leathery too, like a leathery chocolate. I get latex. <laughs> Oh my whatever god, really? Latex, whatever. Yeah, there's something latexy about it to me. It's funny because a lot of people say Baccarat Rouge smells like latex gloves. Hmm. I don't know. But then people say Tuscan leather smells like an ashtray, so on and so forth. So, scent is subjective. Absolutely. Now, this one, all of them definitely smell different on skin. This one more so than the others mm. because you get more of the chocolate on skin than you do on this test strip. Okay. But I do enjoy it. I wore it during a Oud Vember. Okay, yeah, sure. And it was one of my more enjoyable ouds for that month that I subjected myself to wearing all month. <laughs> <laughs> I get more of a woodsy component in yeah. this one. Yeah. But thank you so much, of course. So Really interesting. I just got to say that for being an independent house, a fairly self-taught perfumer, I think that Aaron really did a good job on these, on his line overall, because they don't smell unfinished. Sometimes with... Um, independent perfumes or some naturals here and there they kind of smelled unfinished to my nose anyway like raw I, unfinished yeah, unbalanced to me they smell very balanced which is a good thing and they have little nuances that really work and i think he did a great job i agree Seriously. they feel complete they really do and I can see there's a lot of really good craftsmanship here. And so I'm really enjoying these. And they seem to be very strongly concentrated. So that's another important factor. So they do wear not so loud that they punch you in the face. Not all of them. Mm -hmm. This one here, Santal Stream, lasted on me for a day. It feels like like 24 hours, literally. Oh, wow, that's good. The others, not as long. But they do project nicely. Not, not overload. Sure. Yeah. So that's another that. that's another good thing because sometimes with um, independent houses, sometimes no no diss to independent houses. Please don't. I don't want to seem that I'm dissing independent houses, but you know what I'm saying. Not everybody who sits out to make perfumes in the living room succeed. Yeah, you know? I could see that too. So sure. I do find these really well crafted, very wearable, and definitely worth checking out. I forgot something very important that Aaron is from England. Okay. He, it's an English house, an English perfumer, so I don't think I said that at the beginning. And if I did, I'm reinforcing that it's from England. <laughs> so these travel sprays here are going to go to one of you, one lucky subscriber. All you have to do to win these is subscribe to Brooklyn Fragrance Lover, subscribe to Run Lessons. Thank you. Like this video, then leave one comment down below with what you enjoyed most about this video today. And we do hope that you enjoyed our take on these fragrances. If you're new to this channel, please do consider subscribing. If you haven't, subscriber, click on the bell icon to miss notifications.
reviews and content giveaways, and all the fun always happening right here at BFL. Take care, stay blessed, and we'll see you at the next video. Bye.